Um, Long Pi, we'd like to share with you something special today about Sampat Chanya. And I noticed that many, many meditation practitioners, even among Buddhist people, people still not familiar with the word Sampat Chanya, which translates to awareness. Today, let's get to know it. Three terms today, Sati, Sampat Chanya, and Samadhi. Sati usually translates to mindfulness. It's a big word, mindfulness. Sampachanya is awareness. Are they the same? We'll see. And Samadhi translates to meditation. And usually the better explanation or translation should be concentration. So make sure today you can differentiate these three vocabulary. What they are, how they work, and how they support each other. It's very crucial. And before you come here, before you ordain, or maybe you have been practicing meditation, you know, go to class, self-study or learn from someone else, you hear the word mindfulness a lot this day. And what you don't hear is the word sampachanya or awareness. What is mean by mindfulness? The classic answer to this question is, okay, being mindful at the present moment without making any judgment or analyze. So stay there. It's not enough. It's not enough to help you to better your meditation practice. So the authentic teaching of the Buddha, today I'll take you there and take this with you, okay? You cannot go wrong with the text. Mindfulness and awareness or sati and sampachanya must go together, hand in hand. Must go together. Samadhi or concentration is the goal. We want to have concentration, right? And we want the mind to be still for as long as you know, we want to sit. That's the idea. But in order for the mind to be still, you cannot just rush yourself. Hey, you know what? Still, you know, stay still, don't go anywhere. You need help. And that help, the starter, starter kit to help the mind to be still is Khosati. This is state number one. Okay? Samadhi is the goal. Let's say Samadhi is number three, right? And the second element that support both you know, factor in between is called Sampachanya. Sampachanya can be translated to you know, integrating wisdom. It's a wisdom because it has ability to know, to know what's going on. But when people explain the word mindfulness, they only, ex they only explain one dimension of sati. They don't talk about sampachanya at all. But usually these two things you know, go together. We will take a look, okay, the difference and how it works. So here, three terms, sati which is mindfulness, sampachanya, which is awareness, and samadhi, which is meditation or concentration. Three components. Let's take a look from the text first. Okay. This one I already shared with you, just to recap. This, the Buddha explained the difference between sati and sampachanya. Okay. Sati is mindfulness, right? Sampachanya is awareness. I will keep repeating this so you get familiar with it. This is from the Buddha himself, okay? but to see if we understand. The Buddha said, how is monk? How is monk mindful? How can we be mindful? It is when the monk meditates by observing the aspect of the body, the aspect of the feeling, the aspect of the mind, and the mind object. There are four things that we talked about last time in the five aggregate, and this is, uh, this is related to Satipatthana Sutra. The Buddha helped us, uh, he shared with us of how to cultivate mindfulness from four places from the body, right, from the feeling, from the mind, and from the mind object. This is how to cultivate mindfulness, but he did not explain in detail of how to do that in this sutra. He just the monk to understand that these two things, they are not the same. They're similar, but they're not the same. Sati or mindfulness is about being with these four things. What are those four things? Body, feeling, mind, and mind object. You're being with this, not anything else in the world. When you meditate, you can stay with your physical sensation. You know what's happening in the body. And that can you know, consider one form of mindfulness practice. Or you can look at your feeling. How do you feel right now? Happy, unhappy, neutral. The mind. Do you mind have lust? Do you mind have anger? Do you mind have loss? You feel unsafe or whatever it is. Or what caused you have lust? What caused you have anger? These are 
the reminder that hey you are mindful of what's happening and the second portion the Buddha moved to the meaning of Sampachanya or awareness it's very simple and we have done that without knowing when the monk act with uh, situational awareness or clear comprehension when he going out when he coming back when he look ahead when he look aside when he bending extending limbs okay use your rope your bow Okay. Eating, drinking, chewing, tasting, basically everything you do, including urinating and defecating, walking, standing, sitting, sleeping, waking up, speaking, keep silent. So everything you do, if you know that you are doing that thing fully, that means you have awareness. You have awareness. We will understand a little bit more when we go to the, the example that I'm, I'm going to give it to you. So mindfulness is about being there. But awareness is about knowing what's happening there. They're very close, but they're not the same. Okay, very close. That's why when people teach meditation, they only talk about mindfulness. They don't talk about, they incorporate the sense of awareness into mindfulness. So usually when someone asks Lung Pi to give the definition of mindfulness, I give them three things. Number one, being. Number two, knowing. And number three, remembering. So this should cover, okay, at least, at least this teaching should cover the meaning of mindfulness. When we talk about mindfulness in general, in psychological world, in academic world. Being means you being with the object in front of you, what happened to you. Being at the present moment, that's one dimension. At the same time, you know what's happening. Now you be in the room with me. I know I am here. I am aware and we have the lecture right so we talk so you with, with me here not only uh, physically but mentally mindfully you with me you hear me say you understand what I'm saying so this this is knowing of what's happening now in this room at the same time mindfulness comes with the sense of remembering remembering means you take time to register what you learn you remember like the sample I before I wash my face, I take my glass, eye glass here, I wash my face. When I'm done, I just leave. So I forgot my eye glass and I don't know where it was. So instead of me doing that, I'm going to take time, okay, remind myself, I'm about to take off my eye glass and put on my left and I wash my face. When I'm done, I'm going to come back to this. So I take one second to register removing my eye glass or key or wallet. So people usually forget little things like this because they're not mindful. So they forget. Same thing in meditation. You don't remember what technique, what object that you've been working on. That's why the mind gets lost. The mind starts wandering because we lost the object that we focus on. So we, we, we don't remember. Okay? We all of a sudden we lost conscious. We lost, we lost our concentration. So you can apply this three meaning when it comes to the word mindfulness. The one word that used to translate sati is called mindfulness. You hear this word a lot, but it's very, really vague, okay? And now you know, knowing, being, and remembering. And Sampachanya, the first one is full comprehension. Second one is clear comprehension. Not only full, but you also clear, clear, fully understand. And full awareness or clear awareness. There are four things that you may come across. Full comprehension, clear comprehension, full awareness or clear awareness. It's hard though, it's hard, it's hard to practice, but at least get to know. So here, before you study something, you need to have that thing stay still first, right? You think of the case, when you want to study the bird, the bird flying, you don't know what it is. You don't know what color, you don't know, you know how it looks. And now you want to study that bird. What you do, you need to catch the bird, right? And put in the cage. So sati means you catch it, you catch it, you, you have it still. And then Sampachanya is study it, take a look at it closely. So Sampachanya is more like the eye that study the object in front of you fully. And then you have full comprehension, you have full awareness of the object in front of you. Now you can study the bird. But as soon as you let go of the bird, then you cannot see it, it's gone. So you have to catch it. When we meditate, similar thing. You visualize the object. This is sati. Sati, catch the object and put it here or here 
or here doesn't matter but you use sati to catch it first you remind yourself hey you know what i'm gonna sit 30 minutes and my object of meditation today is the crystal ball so your mind grab it grab it and then you keep it here firmly this is sati now you can use your awareness to study it study how you feel how the body feel how the mind feel where is your mind now and this is sampachanya is working and eventually eventually when you get into the balance the mind fully still then concentration start happening at the beginning we have to do something first before we get there you see how these three things support each other start from sati and then sampachanya start working on to see what's going on okay everything okay the temperature the smell the seat this is sampachanya is working and then samadhi or concentration start happening bit by bit and then it can it may prolong longer and longer so now you want to study the bird now the bird is in the cage you have to do is look at the bird as you wish any dimension any angle this is sampachanya so now the bird cannot go anywhere and here is another example this is a very good example i try to come up <laughs> so when you want to hit the nail okay what is sati sati is you remember i am going to hit the nail right you know so you go find the hammer and then you get the nail as you grab the hammer as you grab the hammer this is called sati. you you remember what you're about to do you being at the present moment not 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 cooking you're gonna hitting the nail so you grab it this is sati sati have to grab first grab what grab the nail and grab the hammer sati is ready and now some person yeah, is knowing that you about to hit the nail what angle should be the right angle how many times you want to hit how hard you want to hit this is some pachanya. this is knowing okay you may hit three times and then you're done or you may need to hit ten times this is some pachanya. and what is samadhi samadhi is when you hit it when you set it firmly and start hitting one two three four five until you finish this is concentrate this is samadhi until the nail you know, fully you know underneath the wood so these three things very close but they're not the same one more example this is the mind the mind is the horse the horse is running everywhere it's wandering right? it doesn't like to stay still samadhi is the pole we want the mind to stay at this pole don't go anywhere but if there is a pole and there is a horse but nothing tie the horse to the pole again the horse will, will be gone it will run away so sati is the rope that tie the horse which is your mind with your meditation object meditation object need to tie with something right the mind is here the pole is here so then you tie it with sati sati here is what you catch right you remember that you catch you catch what you catch this four thing you catch the body sensation you catch the feeling you catch the mind and you catch the mind object to have this thing first one you can catch and that's called sati and how you catch it it's called sampachanya maybe breathing short or long maybe this object is doesn't work so you decided to change or you add mantra with the object this is sampachanya telling you to adjust and how much you should adjust how many times you should adjust it's about sampachanya and when the mind starts to stay still then the role of sati and sampachanya is kind of fade fade down a little bit and let concentration do by itself and when you stay still all the sudden thought come back then sampachanya and sati help to grab the mind back stay there don't go the horse don't go you tie it you see how it works you're gonna need time to reflect on this they're not the same but they support each other fully at the beginning sampachanya and sati work harder than concentration you don't have concentrate yet right a lot of things before you come to this room your concentration or samadhi is not there yet but you slowly build it up by using your sati okay i'm gonna shoot the object of this one i'm gonna use the buddha image i'm gonna use the sound whatever it is nice is sati telling you right i'm gonna do this one and then sampachanya telling you okay where should you place it how big what size what color how many tools you're gonna need today and that is sampachanya and then sati and sampachanya help other to work on that object to kind of slow down the horse slow down the mind and then once the horse feel comfortable then sati and sampachanya kind of can take it easy and let samadhi take over let concentration take over
and then stay there five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, and then the horse start to run again, and then you use a stick to catch the horse, to catch it and have it tied it with the you know object of your meditation, and use your sampajanja to to find the balance. Okay, these two things very important throughout the study of the teaching of the Buddha from day one until we achieve enlightenment. People who achieve arahanship, they have a full comprehension of sati and sapachanya. Their, their mindfulness is very strong. This is the last slide for today. I will share with you more about anapanasati or cultivate mindfulness through the breath later on. It's another you know, good teaching from the Buddha. It's very simple, everyone can practice. So today I will teach you how to practice, how to develop sati and sampachanya by using the breath according to the text. The text said, monks who has gone to the forest, this is the only place I saw in the Buddhist text that how the Buddha actually teach monks to sit <laughs> and do something about, about the mind. Okay, you ordain, you find the forest, the, the foot of trees, okay, an empty place, and sit down cross-legged, sit down cross-legged, holding back erect, sit with the back erect, and arousing mindfulness in front of him. This is his instruction. So that means before you can have good meditation, you need to find a quiet place to sit. You cannot meditate well in the, you know, the noisy place. Okay? The place matter. So the Buddha point to the forest, underneath the tree, okay? sit cross-legged, but here we can sit on the chair, on the couch. Okay? Make sure your body you know, feel comfortable and then sit with the back erect and this help us to be mindful not fall asleep easily and someone asked him hey, why why we have to put our hand like this with your uh, uh, left index touch against your uh, index touch against your left thumb why we have to do this what the benefit of doing this okay one thing i can come up is when you it actually two things when you do this you sit with your back erect if you do this in the right position. And uh, second thing, second benefit is when you fall asleep, okay, your 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 finger will touch each other, so it wake you up. Okay, if you if you if you sit in this position, okay, you can try. This will help us to kind of expand the the shoulder blade and keep the back erect. And then when we fall asleep or moving the body lean backward forward, so the index will move and it touch, and then it wake it wake us up. Then you can start over again. Okay, but if you let your hand anywhere, then there is no indicator telling you that you fall asleep. Okay, so you can look at that. Okay, now let's practice this together. So, okay, we find a comfortable sitting position. Okay, at home you can lie down, no problem. And then you are arousing mindfulness in front of him. This is very confusing. Where? In front of you. Sit over there. Is it here? Is it here? Or is it like how many meters in front of me? Okay. So then we have to go find another teaching to support this <laughs> sutra. Okay. So I found one of the places that's from explained by Saliputta. Uh, explain what the Buddha means when he said arousing mindfulness in front of him. Okay. To keep it short. In front of us means in this case we are going to use the breath. In front of us means three places. It can be here. as your nostril. It can be here where your breath touch your lips or it can be actually at your lips. There are three places. One, two, three. So wherever you feel that the air touch this area, that should be the area of focus. Okay? Can be the nostril itself, can be the space between the nose and the lips, or can be the lips, upper lip itself. Anywhere, okay, somewhere that you know this is this is this is it. This is I know that the 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 breath touch my physical body, so this is the place where you should focus or concentrate when you practice breathing meditation. So today we're gonna practice sati, which is mindfulness and sampachanya, or awareness by using the breath. Very simple. So what we do. We're going to try together for three minutes and to see what happened. To see how many times that your mind slip out. To see how strong of your sati. Okay. <laughs> what we do is 
you know you can close your eye or open up your eye it doesn't matter okay what we do we are going to to breathe without forcing breathe normally in and out normally but instead of let the mic go anywhere you place your your attention you know on this location with the one two three pick one pick one of this and stay there don't follow your breath in don't follow the breath out stay there only one place and i want you to observe what happening in the body when you breathe why are you keeping your concentration at this location one two three okay, any place here and just keep on breathing in and out for three minutes so i will time it i'll let you know so you do nothing pay nothing to the whole world just just stay there three minutes Just keep your focus at one place in front of you. Do not following the breathe in and the breathe out. Just stay there one place. At the same time, observe or aware of what's happening in the body when you breathe in and out. Sati means you know that you keep your attention at that place you catch it there and sampachanya is knowing of what happening as you breathe in and out relax or not relax comfortable or uncomfortable thought or no thought like or don't like Don't let the mind attention move from your breath. One more minute. Ten second. Okay. So now you can open up your eyes. Is your mind wandering? No. Okay. Good. You know that you're here. Yeah. Okay. Physical sensation. Yes. Good. This is Sampachanya. You hear the sound, you know the physical sensation, you know the temperature. At the same time, your mind doesn't move. You know that you're still here. You see, it's very simple. It's very refined. Just need to master on it. If you, if you play with this, your concentration is going to be much better. So the more actually I do it, yes. the more the Sampachanya It will get stronger. It will get stronger. Just like you push up 10 times 10 time a day. 60 days from now, you're not going to be the same. You have more muscle. I, I usually take five minutes a day doing this before breakfast. I just do nothing but sit and breathe. I know it's work for me. So I hope this is something you can take with you. Okay. Dennis, you okay? You reflect on this? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, several times I just forgot about it. 
This forget is a good word. Sati is about remembering. Yes. That, that means you pay attention and then do you stress or not stress? Good or bad? Like or don't like? This is Sampachanya telling you. If you know that, you know, I'm, I'm, sometimes you breathe quickly and short, you don't feel good. Slow down. Slow down. Take a deep breath. Work with it. Don't stay with that painful feeling or uncomfortable feeling. Uh, you can apply this to every activity. When you eat, you're remembering that you eat. Otherwise, you would think of something else. You not only you don't know the taste, you don't know the texture. People only know the taste; they don't feel the texture. When they eat, you swallow right away. So, can you kind of slow down to know both of the taste and the texture? Take your time to chew. This is sati and sampachanya, knowing, chewing. And how much more do you need? It's also sampachanya. When you the spoon go out to take the food, this is called sati. Sati, I'm going to take meat or I'm going to take vegetable. Sati, you grab that. When, when it's in your mouth, now Sampachanya is working. Sati is working together. How many times should you chew? Is it okay enough to, to swallow? This is Sampachanya and Sati. It's very defined, but it can be practiced. So well, let's meditate together.